Hey friends, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about my top five herbal remedies for immunity. If you're new here, my name is Melinda Ring. I'm an integrative and culinary medicine doctor. And on this channel, I help you explore the tools and the strategies that help us all live healthy, happier, and holistic lives. It is the first week of snow in Chicago, and that is my sign that it's time to pull out all of my favorite remedies to help support immunity because we have a long winter ahead. In this series of videos, I'm gonna share some of my top tips, everything from my body practices to recipes to natural products you can use for immunity, but today I wanna to start with my favorite herbs. So let's get real here. The last few years have been a viral spiral and we all wanna bump up our infection protection. When the pandemic started, dietary supplements were just flying off the shelves and there were a lot of unfounded claims. Now things have settled down a bit, but there are still some time-tested strategies that you can use to support your immunity this winter and all year round. And of course, let's just start with a disclaimer, particularly if you have autoimmune disease or on immune suppressants or have certain conditions, make sure that you always talk to your own doctor before using any herbs or supplements that may potentially interact. So let's start the countdown. Number five is one of my all time favorites and everybody's favorites, ginger. We usually think about ginger for nausea, like nausea and vomiting of pregnancy. It's been used and studied for nausea due to chemotherapy, but it's actually one of our best immune boosters and it is readily found in your grocery. So the fresh juice or tea of ginger contains compounds that are both on the one hand antiviral, antibacterial, and on the other hand, rich in antioxidants and anti-inflammatory compounds. So they're working both on fighting the cause of a, an infection and just supporting the immune system in an underlying way. One of my favorite ways to use ginger is just to make a ginger tea. So easy. You get fresh ginger, the ginger root. You don't even need to peel it. You should probably wash it off. And then you're going to cut it into thin slices. You should plan on using about, about an inch of fresh ginger for a cup of tea. And I like to brew a bigger batch of that. You can do 10 to 20 minutes to get a stronger brew. That's it. You're done. You have your ginger tea. And then if you want, drizzle a little bit of local honey or agave syrup, and you've got a delicious and immune supporting treat. Number four, we have garlic. And garlic is a super powerful anti-inflammatory herb. We usually think about garlic for gastric stuff because it's really good when people have intestinal parasites, for example, or dysbiosis and imbalance in the bacteria, but it's also just good for supporting the whole immune system. It contains a compound called allicin, and that allicin is a powerful anti-inflammatory chemical. Now, the issue though, is that when you have your garlic, you can't just cook it right away after peeling it. What you really want to do is activate the enzyme that allows that compound allicin to form. So what you should do, take the garlic, chop it up, mash it, however you're going to do it when it's raw, and then leave it to sit for five to 10 minutes, allow those allicin compounds to form, and then you can heat it because once you heat it, it is now going to inactivate the enzyme. And so whatever you have at that point is what you're gonna have in your body. So for garlic, remember, make that one simple change, just chop it, mash it, smush it up, and then let it sit for five to 10 minutes before eating it or cooking it. Okay, number three. So it's gonna seem a little strange, but medicinal mushrooms are another one of my favorites. And it is true, medicinal mushrooms are not technically herbs, but they are oftentimes included in herbalism practices. The different medicinal mushrooms, some we use them for cooking all the time, like shiitake mushrooms. But then there are other ones like reishi mushrooms, which have a woody texture and they're not necessarily so palatable. So for some of the mushrooms, I do of course recommend putting them into your stir fries, putting them into your soup. But for some of the others where we want to get the benefit, I actually prefer to use them in more of a supplement form. There are a lot of great brands out there, but one of my favorites is the company that was started by expert mycologist Paul Stamets, and he founded this company, and I really, really like his supplements, like the host defense supplements, like Stamets 7, the host 
post defense powder. This has lion's mane, turmeric, reishi, and ginger. I put this in my coffee every day. So these are really commonly available. You can get them at Amazon. I have links down below. You can get them at a health store. And really what I like to do throughout the winter is use a tincture like this one and use like a milliliter one dropper full twice a day just to keep supporting my immune system with all of the wonderful polysaccharides that are found in mushrooms. Okay, number two in the countdown. We've all heard of this one, echinacea. So echinacea, there's a lot of different forms of echinacea. Echinacea purpura is the one that is the most studied when it comes to colds and flus and usually the echinacea root. Echinacea has been shown to help boost our natural killer cells and our T lymphocytes. Those are really key components in our just natural immune system so that when some sort of infection comes our way and we get exposed, they are ready and armed to go to fight that infection. Now, when it comes to research on echinacea, pretty much anything that we look at, you're gonna find studies on both sides of the fence. But in general, I would say that the studies show that if you use echinacea and you use it at the start of an infection, so you can't use it too far in, really what you wanna do is at the start, when you feel like an infection is coming on, that is a great time to get echinacea on board. For example, one study, it was a meta-analysis that looked at 14 different studies and it showed that echinacea reduced the risk of developing a cold by 58%. And then when people did develop a cold, the duration of the cold was shorter than other people in the placebo groups by one to four days. Now, that's not seen in every study, but again, really, we don't have that much against the common cold. So if we can reduce the duration by one to four days, that's pretty awesome in my books. I actually like to use this with other herbs, including my number one herb, which I'm gonna talk about next. Yes, drum roll, please. So number one, I just really love elderberry. And I make elderberry syrup every winter at the start of the winter. Everyone in my family, we have it in the fridge. We have one tablespoon a day. You can bump it up in frequency if you have an actual infection to, again, just really support that immune system. It was being used traditionally and historically for different conditions before people even knew that it was infection that was causing those symptoms. So it's really been used for thousands of years. A few important things to know about it is that you do not want to have elderberry raw. It has to be cooked because in the raw form, there are some compounds that are similar to a cyanide-like compound. Yuck. And if you eat them raw, you may have nausea, vomiting, and other unpleasant effects. So remember, you want to use this after it's been cooked. The other thing is that the one that we want to look for is Sambucus nigra, also known as an elder. And this is the preferred one because again, some of the other forms of elder either are toxic or they're not going to have the effect that you want. So elderberry has been studied for the cold, the flu, H1N1. And again, like echinacea, we want to use it at the start or in a preventive kind of way. I like to make my own homemade elderberry syrup. We use this and cinnamon, put some echinacea in there, put some ginger, grow it up. And that is something I'm going to share with you in an upcoming video. So there you have it five herbs that are going to keep you healthy against or comes our way this winter, elderberry, echinacea, medicinal mushrooms, garlic, and yummy ginger. I hope you have fun brewing these up and make some use. Please share with me if you have some herbs that are your favorites and please subscribe so you can watch some of the upcoming videos, including this one, on what's coming next and helping you support your immune system and many other things to keep you healthy down the road. Thank you, bye-bye.